Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilbin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and this is part 16 of my Kobolds and Catacombs card review. This time around, I have four new cards, including what some people are calling the worst card in the history of Hearthstone. <laughs> Might be a slight exaggeration, but we'll get into this uh, pretty terrible card, along with a handful of others. Up first, I'll be doing my detailed reviews, but if you're someone who doesn't have a ton of time, of course, you can use the link in the description to skip over to my quick reviews, where you just take a quick look at the cards and see my ratings from 1 to 5 stars. If you just care about the reveals themselves, that's a good spot to head. But if you're somebody who likes a little more discussion, let's go ahead and jump right into my detailed reviews. So up first here we have what people are calling the worst card in Hearthstone's history. Certainly the worst card in the Kobolds and Catacombs reveal season so far. This is a new Hunter spell. To my side, a six mana spell that reads summon an animal companion, or two if your deck has no minions. So before we start talking about how presumably terrible this card is, uh, let's break it down first. So clearly uh, the default condition here, summoning an animal companion for six mana, is blatantly awful. That's a three mana spell, Animal Companion. So we know that, that that is just completely irrelevant. This card never works unless you're satisfying this or condition. And the or condition allows you to summon two Animal Companions if your deck has no minions. That's right, no minions. If you thought satisfying a challenge like Keliseth's deck building requirement was difficult, no two drops, or at least no two mana cards, uh, this one's even harder in that you can't have any minions at all left in your deck when you play to my side in order to get two animal companions. So that is a giant, enormous, unbelievably difficult challenge. It's something we have seen before in Hunter with like the old Yogg and Load deck where you would run just 29 spells and Yogg Saron. But first off, that was a meme deck, and it did technically have one minion in Yogg Saron. Uh, but you could clearly build a list that's pretty similar, just cut like Yogg Saron, and I think sometimes that deck had like Malagos in it as well. You could just cut a handful of those, and you would have, you know, a somewhat reasonably playable hunter deck, although clearly very low tier and very terrible, because the one strength hunter has is its minions. It has some really good minions. Uh, so the deck building challenge here, as we understand Hearthstone today, is completely unfathomably too difficult to accomplish. But here's the other problem with this card. Summoning two animal companions for six mana just isn't that amazing. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> You're getting two, essentially three mana things uh, bundled into a single card for six mana. But it's at an expected cost. Three times two is six. Uh, there is a slight advantage, of course, bundling multiple bodies into a single card. That means you get more for every card you draw in your deck. So it makes your card draws more valuable. It makes your deck go a little bit farther. So there's a slight advantage there. But when you compare this to something like the original Call of the Wild, for instance, Call of the Wild summons you all three animal companions. Uh, and it did it at a, at a discount, right? It gave you a, kind of a bonus because, you know, it was such a high-cost card. You got one mana discounted, essentially, because it was eight instead of the expected nine mana. And that was a really good card. That was a strong enough card that made Hunter viable for a little while. Then, of course, it got nerfed and Call of the Wild moved to nine mana. And when you looked at it there, what, what was essentially its expected value became a lot worse. Partially because you couldn't combo it with hero power, but also just because you weren't getting quite as much value point per mana. Uh, and, and to my side, falls into that same trap. It's just kind of the expected value. There's no discount here for uh, paying additional mana, as you might expect there to be. And in fact, with to my side, there should be an enormous discount in order to make up for this incredibly challenging condition to get anything remotely close to its value. So if this were like a four mana card, it would make a lot more sense because it would be a downside to playing a regular animal companion. But if you satisfied this totally absurd requirement, then you got a two mana discount. And, you know, getting a couple animal companions for four mana would be really, really strong. At six mana, I don't know that it's strong enough. Like, it's an okay card. If it was just straight up six mana summon two animal companions, that would be a playable card. I think that would see some play. I don't think it'd be overpowered. I don't think it'd be a guaranteed inclusion in every deck. But to meet this condition, that's the kind of card this has to be. It has to be that super crazy powerful. It has to be totally absurd, or it's just not going to be worth it. So ultimately what that means is me and many other people have deemed this card completely unplayable. 
Now, weirdly enough, there are some people who just love to be contrary. I've seen other streamers and some people in the community come to this card's defense and say, well, wait a minute, what if Blizzard prints some other card that just synergizes with this one beautifully? And somehow that becomes a new archetype, archetype this no minion hunter deck. Um, okay, that could happen, right? They could print a card that says, uh, when you play to my side, you win the game, right? Just some, you know, exaggerate this to the max level. Yes, you can always create cards to prop up other cards, but that does not make this a fundamentally good card. That means that Blizzard is shoehorning some deck together uh, that maybe they can do some absurd things to make it overpowered. You can think of a similar sort of mechanic with Purify, for instance, once called the worst card in Hearthstone, and I still maintain Purify is a terrible card. It's a good card when it's run exactly with Huge Razor Leaf, but you had to print Huge Razor Leaf to make Purify relevant. Otherwise, Purify is just terrible. It only works in one incredibly speci specific environment, one specific archetype, one very limited, restrictive set of cards to support it. It's exactly Ancient Watcher and Huge Razor Leaf, and frankly, only Huge Razor Leaf was good enough to make the difference. Ancient Watcher itself wasn't good. So yes, there are ways to print cards to make something like this, this new no minion archetype runner, a reasonable thing. Uh, but that doesn't make to my side good. That just means it's you know kind of inextricably tied to some imaginary future card we haven't seen yet. So this is still an awful card, even if they did print something to support it. Like yes, you can come to its defense in that way with any card in Hearthstone. You could say, well, what if they made this amazing thing that supported this card and then it becomes good? Sure. But that doesn't make the card good as we understand Hearthstone. It's not fundamentally strong. In fact, it's pretty fundamentally terrible. It, it doesn't make sense. The math doesn't work. The conditions are impossible. So yes, To My Side is an, an incredibly bad card. I don't know that it's the worst card in Hearthstone, but maybe the worst card in Kobolds and Catacombs that we've seen thus far. So up next, let's move on to a new Druid card. This is the Greedy Sprite. A new 3-mana three 3-1 three, minion with a death rattle that reads gain an empty mana crystal. So here we have essentially a new entry into the ramp mechanic for Druid. And I think that this card is designed to be a replacement because a couple ramp cards are going to be rotating out essentially in four months with the next standard format rotation whenever the expansion after Kobolds and Catacombs releases. We're going to be losing uh, Jade Blossom and Mire Keeper, two of the most common ramp cards available to Druid. So I think Blizzard has recognized the need there and to get a card ready to go. Uh, now, unfortunately for Greedy Sprite, I do think it's substantially worse than both of those ramp cards are right now. So it's worth noting that when you play this out, um, if your opponent kills you, f kills it for you, it's it's interesting because you get the mana crystal basically immediately. Like that gaining an empty mana crystal is happening on their turn. So when it's passed back to your turn, you're going to have that filled in because it's going to fill in all your empty mana crystals. But if you're forced to kill this yourself, it does kind of ramp you even at a further delay because you're gaining an empty mana crystal and you have to wait till the next turn to utilize that. It's still going to be impactful that it gets you closer to those big, powerful 8, 9, 10 drops or whatever. But it could make a difference in the mid-game, just allowing you to cheat out that one extra card. You know, hitting that Spreading Plague a turn earlier, making your Nourish playable the turn immediately after Greedy Sprite. So your opponent, if they're smart, often won't trade into this thing. And it'll give you essentially one more turn of delay on your ramp. Which could be frustrating and could impact the consistency of this card as well. So that's all fine. The problem for me with Greedy Sprite, though, is actually something else. It's that both Mire Keeper and Jade Blossom, in the context of their decks, their respective decks being Jade for Jade Blossom and, well, Mire Keeper kind of fits in everything, but traditionally Big Druid right now uh, for Mire Keeper. In those contexts, they both do more things in the late game. Because the thing about ramp is you don't always draw all your ramp in the early game when you need it. Sometimes you draw it on turn 10, turn 15, and you need to get sort of double value out of those. In a Jade deck, Jade Blossom sometimes just summons you like an 8-8 when you draw it late because you've ramped your Jade so high. They're now 8-8s, and it's a 3-mana 8-8, and that is fantastic. And then Mire Keeper, worst case scenario, if you draw it in the late game after you've already ramped out, it's essentially just 4-mana and stats. You get essentially, you know, 5-5 five, five total stats. You get a 3-3 three, three, and a 2-2, two, two, and that's, that's pretty solid for 4-mana too. It's sometimes just a fine play to play it as minions. Greedy Sprite, on the other hand, doesn't do very much when you draw it in the late game. It's dead. It's just a one health minion. The death rattle is there for useless at that point because you're not ramping anymore. So this one feels really weird in the late game and weaker than those alternatives. And the fact that it's not quite as flexible or dual purpose as those other cards, 
that's a problem. Now, you can kind of already see that happening in a uh, big druid who tends to squeeze in some jade blossoms, even though they don't run any other jades. They just play jade blossoms to make sure they have consistent ramp. And you love hitting jade blossom on turn three as a big druid, but when you draw it in the late game, it's that card that just kind of sits in your hand is completely dead because it's like you're going to get a 1-1, one, one, maybe a 2-2 two, two if you already played the other one. And that's just not impactful when you're doing all these other crazy things with your mana in the late game. And I think Greedy Sprite will often feel exactly like that dead Jade Blossom does in Big Druids. It's going to be great when you hit it on turn 3, or at least it's going to be fine. But then it's going to be terrible if you have to play it just as a 1 health guy. 3 attack doesn't contribute anything at all. It's about the same as the 2-2 two, two Jade Blossom. A little better, arguably, than a 1-1 one, one Jade Blossom, right? Because it's more likely to trade, although it still dies for free to virtually everything. So uh, not as quite of a dual purpose card by any means as those other two options. So I think this card is fine. It might see play if there are no other ramp options for Druid just because they need the ramp so desperately. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be as strong or feel quite as good as the options we have today. So up next, let's move on to a new Shaman card. This is the Murmuring Elemental, a new 2-mana 1-1 one, one Elemental with a battle cry that reads, Your next battle cry this turn triggers twice. So here we have a spiritual successor to Bran Bronzebeard. We've got double battle cry activations. Now, of course, when you do compare this card to Bran Bronzebeard, as, as one is you know kind of obviously going to do, because they have very, very similar effects, uh, he comes up very short of Bran Bronzebeard. Bran is only one extra mana, uh, but he's a neutral card, he's got way more stats, and his battle cry is not limited to the next, or his effect is not limited to the next battle cry. His effect is all battle cries triggering twice. It's also passive, so if you somehow summon him into, the, into play without activating his battle cry, it still works. So, Murray Elemental is just undeniably way, way worse than Brian Bronzebeard uh, at only one mana cheaper. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean Rum Murmuring Elemental is a failed card, though, because Brian Bronzebeard is one of the best cards in the history of Hearthstone, I think. He's probably top 10 or top 20 as far as playable cards are concerned. So a card doesn't have to be quite that good to be playable. I think Murmuring Elemental might still be playable despite that. Uh, he has some very obvious elemental synergies, and Shaman are getting a handful of those. He also has a very powerful battle cry, which Shaman has gotten some new... Battle Cry synergies with Grumble as well. So you can start piecing all this stuff together. Like this works really well with Grumble, works in an elemental deck, all those things fused together. So there is, uh, you know, I'm seeing a deck brewing where Elemental Shaman becomes really powerful because it does have great Battle Cries. Kalamos, Blaze Caller, Servant of Kalamos, even uh, Fire Plume Phoenix. Like all these cards have solid Battle Cries that would very much benefit from Murmuring Elemental. So I, I do think this effect is good enough if your deck is Battlecry based, and getting two Kalamoses is fantastic. Uh, it's unfortunate that you can't use this with multiple cards in a turn, right? You can only use it with one other Battlecry per turn. But if you're bouncing it back to your hand with Grumble, that's going to give this card more reach and more raw power and more influence over the game, despite being only a, a meager two drop. Another great thing about this card is that, you know, just having cheap elementals in your deck goes a long way. Uh, towards activating your next elemental trigger because of course you have to play an elemental on the previous turn for things like Kalamos and Blaze Caller. So sometimes you might just have to throw this down to set up for that next um, battle cry, you know, or your next elemental minion your following turn because you need that powerful Kalamos. You don't have any other options, which is why I think this card would have been pretty cool if it actually said your battle cry's next turn trigger twice instead of your next battle cry this turn triggers twice. So, in other words, it would give you the ability to trigger multiple battle cries multiple times the following turn, but it has to be the following turn. Because that's what elementals are all about, right? It's like setting up that next turn. So this one doesn't really feel like it matches thematically as far as the other elementals are concerned. It's still going to work well and synergize well with that kind of archetype. But I think it would have been way cooler if it did say, your battle cries next turn triggered twice. That would have fit really well into what elementals are about. There's probably some reason that's overpowered or too good, so Blizzard dialed back on that kind of idea. Uh, so Murmuring Elemental looks playable. It's only going to be good in Elemental decks, I think. I don't know that there are other battle cries that are strong enough. But with a card like this, of course, it can do crazy things. There's always shenanigans available with powerful effects like this. Anything that is traditionally great with Bran will be okay with Murmuring Elemental. Probably a little worse than Bran. So I don't think this card ever sees play in Wild, or at least it might if you need three of these. That's one advantage over Bran is you can run two in Wild. You could run three with Bran as well. 
So, uh, some cool little things happening here. Enough potential to make an impact. I don't think a, a, an overwhelmingly powerful card by any means, but certainly a playable one, particularly in an Elemental Shaman deck. And then finally, I have one last card here. This is a new neutral card, the Void Ripper. A 3-mana three 3-3 three, three demon, and neutral demons are fairly rare in Hearthstone, so this is only one of a handful we've seen before. Not usually too many implications for that, but still interesting to see. And this one has a battle cry that reads, Swap the attack and health of all other minions. So this is sort of a confuse on a stick. Confuse a card we saw previously in Priest, but uh, this one's attached to a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three minion, and hey, that's pretty good. 3-mana three, you know, three, three solid stat line, pretty much what you'd expect for three mana, and this Battle Cry is very strong. It's gonna be hard to use. You might have to design your deck in a way to support this. Not every board state necessarily, you know, encourages this kind of Battle Cry, but nonetheless, it's a big board impacting, sweeping style effect. So I think a card like Void Ripper will find some ways to see played. Particularly, you can think about uh, things like uh, eggs. We've got uh, Devil Sword Egg that would work incredibly well with Void Ripper. So if there's some sort of particularly Zoo Warlock deck with some demon synergy and some egg stuff happening, then Void Ripper makes a lot of sense in that sort of environment because you get the demon synergy, you get the egg uh, pops. He's also kind of a good counter to things like Totems and Doomsayers for switching their health. So there's some interesting applications there. You could even use this card in something like Priest in a deck with a ton of high health minions buffing them with Divine Spirit, and this essentially gives you another inner fire where you can just swap all those health totals all at once, multiple minions at a time, and hit your opponent for a ton of damage. So I really like this card. You're not sacrificing much in the regard of stats. The 3 mana 3 3 is about what you'd expect. You got the demon tag to help it. And this Battle Cry has a lot of different uh, ways to be utilized. So I think Void Ripper is a solid little card for just a, a regular old neutral minion. And I think this is something that somebody's going to find a home for. It's going to have some deck where it makes a big enough impact to make the cut. So I think Void Ripper is going to see some play. And that wraps it up, guys, for my detailed review. So now what I'd like to do is jump into my quick reviews where I rate each of these stars from, or each of these cards from one to five stars. To my side is a one star card. Greedy Sprite is a three-star card. Murmuring Elemental is a three-star card. And Void Ripper is a four-star card. <clears throat> and there you go, guys. One of the worst cards we've seen yet. And a handful of solid cards that I think we'll see some play in one way or another. I'm curious what you guys have to say, though. Which of these cards do you think I got right? Which ones did I get wrong? Which ones are you most excited about? How much do you hate to my side? Are you mad at Blizzard for ruining Hunter? <laughs> I'm going to hear all those uh, thoughts, good or bad, in the comments below. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, game on.